Welcome to my lecture online. How do we find the angle between two planes that intersect one another? And of course, if you look at it, there's really two angles. We can look for the angle theta and we'll look for the angle phi. So we want to look for the acute angle. If by chance, through the process, we find phi, of course, we can subtract phi from 180 degrees to find theta. So let's say that here we have the two equations representing the two planes. Now notice we have a red vector that is the perpendicular vector to the second plane and the blue vector is the perpendicular vector to the first plane. Now the angle between those two vectors will equal the angle between the planes. So all we have to do is find the angle between the two vectors. And we can do that by using the dot product. Remember that if we take the dot product between two vectors, let's say A and B, that is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them, and it's also equal to the product of the components, the X components, plus the product of the Y components, plus the product of the Z components. So in other words, we can then solve this for theta. We can then say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of ax bx plus ay by plus az bz all divided by the magnitude of a and b multiplied together. So we're going to employ the same technique. So first, of course, we need to find the two vectors. And we can say that vector 1 is going to be equal to, and that's a vector 1 perpendicular, it's going to be equal to uh, 2 in the i direction, minus 4 in the j direction, plus 4 in the k direction. And vector 2 perpendicular is going to be equal to 6 in the i direction, plus 2 in the j direction, minus 3 in the k direction. I know that I switched the subscripts around, but we know we're talking about the same vectors. Now we're going to plug that into our equation. So theta is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of the x components multiplied together. So 2 times 6 plus the y components, negative 4 and 2, and plus the z components, 4 and negative 3. And we're going to take the whole thing and divide it by the magnitudes. So in this case, we're going to take the square root of the x, y, and z components squared added together, so that's 2 squared uh, plus a negative 4 squared plus a 4 squared. And we're going to multiply that times the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared plus a negative 3 squared. All right, all we have to do is simplify that, see what we get. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of here we get 12 minus 8 minus 12 divided by, and of course, by the way, we should take the absolute value of that. Well, we don't need to. I think we, we can get by by not taking the absolute value because we can have a negative angle, so to speak. Same thing. We don't have to worry about that. So we can take that as a negative value, and here we get that 16 plus 16, that 32 plus 4, that's the square root of 36, times the square root of... That will be uh, 36, 40, 49. Okay, this is equal to the inverse cosine of 12 minus 12 is 0. We get a minus 8. And we divide that by the square root of 36, which is 6 times the square root of 49 is 7. 6 times 7, which is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 8 over 42. All right, let's see what that's equal to. Inverse cosine. Okay, we get an angle of 101 degrees. Here's an example where we didn't find theta, we actually found phi. We can remedy that by taking the absolute value of this number, and then we would have found theta. So to make sure we find the acute angle, we can either take the absolute value of this amount we'll get the correct answer, answer for theta, or here we realize we got the angle for phi, and therefore we're going to have to take 180 minus phi to get theta. So the best way to remedy that is simply say, to make sure we get the acute angle, we're going to put absolute value signs around this, 
like this, like this, and so we get a positive 8 over 42, and then when we calculate the angle, we had, end up actually with 79 degrees, 180 minus 101. And so that's the best way to ensure that we got the acute angle rather than either one of the angles and then try to figure out what to do with the result of that. And that's the best way to do it, and that is how we find the angle between two planes that intersect one another. That's how it's done.